this video I'm going to show you how to take a real valued signal, it's a signal you would find in real world applications, and generate a single sided FFT and do some spectral analysis on that signal. I've already got the spreadsheet set up with a signal. I've determined the signal frequency is going to be 1 hertz, that's one cycle per second. You can see that over here in the chart. Sampling frequency is 32 hertz. That means we're going to take 32 samples per second, and I've created a time vector and a signal vector over here. So the next thing we're going to do is take the FFT of this signal. First thing you're going to want to do is go to Options, Add-ins, and make sure that both the Analysis Tool Pack, and if you're going to do anything in VBA, the Analysis Tool Pack VBA is engaged. They are in this case. Once those are enabled, we're going to be able to calculate our complex signal. do that by going to the data tab, data analysis. You want to make sure Fourier analysis is selected. Our input range is going to be the signal we generated. Our output range is going to be this column right here. And we're going to hit OK. And this is going to create a vector of complex values. First value was 0 for both real and imaginary. The second one is minus 16i, so that tells us there's no real part, there's just an imaginary part. These are the kind of values you'd expect to see from a, an FFT. We're going to want to take the complex values and scale those back to real parts. One of the first things we've got to do is get our samples. FFT is scaled by the number of samples that are in that FFT, and there's an easy way to do that in Excel with the count function. I'm just going to count the number of samples in our signal. The next thing we're going to do is get the magnitude of our FFT. We're going to do that using the IMABS function. We'll copy that down and fill out this vector there. We have the magnitude. The one thing that we need to do is we need to divide by the number of samples in the signal. And because we're going to be doing a single-sided FFT, we actually need to divide the number of samples by 2 because we're only displaying half the FFT. Let's keep in mind for that complex valued signal, there's actually two pieces of information in there. One is the amplitude, if you want to think about that, the magnitude that we're looking at here. The other thing that's the phase, and we're going to want to extract that as well. Uh, and we have a little bit of a problem here, so I'm going to use an if statement. So if this magnitude is greater than, if the absolute value of this magnitude is greater than, say, some very small value, then we're OK to use the IM argument function to calculate the angle of our complex value. Otherwise, we're going to want to put 0 in there, and that's just a placeholder so the plots look accurate. Should be good to copy that down. So this is going to give us our phase. I'd like to have the phase in degrees, and it's returning it in radians. So we'll make one more change. We're going to multiply that times 180 divided by pi, and that's going to convert it from radians to degrees. That looks good, and it's worth taking a moment to explore why we have a minus 90 degrees in here. The FFT implicitly assumes the function that generates your sinusoids is cosine. It does that because cosine has some nice symmetry properties that speeds the calculation. In our signal, we're using sine, and since sine is 90 degrees off from cosine, that's where that 90 degrees comes from. Next, we want to calculate our frequency labels. Easy one for the first, that's a DC signal, so that's going to be 0. Our bin spacing is going to be equal to 1 divided by the total length of time the sample took. So for us, that's 1 divided by the number of samples divided by the sampling frequency. We want to anchor these down. And then we'll want to copy this down to fill all these cells. And it's worth pausing here to note that we've got a property 
showing in this data. It's called Hermitian symmetry, and it's a property of the FFT. And what it says is that for a real valued signal, you're going to get the same magnitude, and we'll see magnitude 1 and magnitude 1, reflected about the center point of that FFT. And it tells us that we have in our magnitude duplicate information. So when we go to plot a spectrum, most people will plot just the half spectrum. So if we take a look, our half spectrum is going to be right through here. So I'm going to draw a border there. Looks like we're ready to put plot some data. So I'm going to begin by copying this other plot because I like the aspect ratio in it. And I can just select some new data for this. There's our frequency. And we'll plot our magnitude. And we want to get this labeled correctly, too. And the amplitude is still the volts. So let's make this a little clearer. Let's say this is spectrum magnitude. We're going to want to create a similar plot, but for phase. Let's select the data for this. Y value stay this, uh, X value stay the same. The Y value is our phase. So that's a single sided spectrum with both amplitude and phase. I think before we conclude the video, I want to show you a few things that uh, be aware of. This is a specially constructed signal. That is, the signal is exactly periodic with our sampling rate. So in 32 samples, our signals complete, completed one period. This makes the spectrum look very clean. I've got just all of that energy in one component. If I go and shift this frequency, recalculate the FFT, we're going to see a very different looking spectrum. Ah, and this is what we'd expect to see. Now my peak value is somewhat less than 1, and I've got values on the bins to the right of that. My phase is not looking so clean either. What's happening here is something called spectral leakage. And it's a property of the FFT that it always assumes the signal it's looking at is windowed or bounded by a rectangle. And there's ways you can fix this. The easiest way is just to have more si signal cycles in your sample or to have more samples. And that'll get you a closer and closer approximation. And we can look at windowing as well. I'd be interested in hearing your comments and feedback. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, I do want to mention I will post the spreadsheet to a GitHub repo and put that link in the description below.